Okay, we're now on lesson 4.9. Remember, you should have come straight from lesson 4.3 to lesson 4.9. We're gonna go back and hit the lessons in between in a little bit. So we're talking about performing congruence transformations, or you could say congruent transformations on a graphing plane. So we've talked about those transformations in the previous video, lesson 4.3's video. We talked about translations. We're gonna start with that one right here in just a second. We talked about reflections, we talked about rotations, and then we talked about compositions and glide reflections. Okay, so a translation. There's two ways to write this translation notation. The first is to use parentheses and start with x comma y. Then we just draw an arrow that says, hey, I'm going to change it to this x plus a comma y plus b. a and b are going to be actual numbers. And they could be negative numbers. So we could have x minus 4 or x plus two, we could have y plus one or y minus three or something like that. Or the other way you can do it, by the way, this is the way our book does it most of the time. This is what I prefer to do. It's a little bit more physics oriented, all right? Um, more calculus oriented as well, as physics and calculus are somewhat related, but it's using a vector. So it's kind of this V-shaped parentheses, and all it does is put the numbers in here. It's the same numbers you would have seen here and here. Okay, and that's called vector notation. All right, so you should be familiar with either one of those. This will probably show up on a quiz or a test. This will be more like in your homework. So you need to be familiar and realize they mean the same thing. All right, so if we had something like this, and it says x comma y with this arrow, and then it says x plus three comma y minus one. This means take all of your x values and move them, since it's positive, we're gonna move them to the right three places. Remember, x moves right and left. This tells me I'm gonna move down, negative meaning down, one place. Okay, this has the same idea, three to the right, down one. So I take every single point and I move three to the right and down one. And I do that for every vertex on my shape. All right, if I do that correctly, my new shape will look exactly congruent to my original shape. All right, so that's how you will see translations written out, one of those two ways. Okay, now a reflection. There's a couple different reflections. You do not need to memorize this. I'm just showing you how this could happen, okay? You can reflect though in the x-axis. You can reflect in the y-axis. You can reflect in a, uh, a vertical line. Remember the Hoy and Vux thing we've talked about earlier? So a vertical line, x equals a number. So maybe x equals two. And you could just reflect across the line, x equals two. Or you could reflect across a horizontal line like y equals negative five. Now keep in mind the x-axis is horizontal, but a y equals number is horizontal, and that can get a little confusing sometimes. Really the x-axis is y equals zero, and the y-axis is x equals zero, okay? And then we could do a reflection in the line y equals x. We don't do that um, quite as often as these. It is a little harder. And we could do other lines like y equals 2x minus 1, but that gets more difficult. So we're going to focus primarily just on y equals x. Now, if you were to use this whole idea of this notation with the arrow, what happens with the x-axis is the x value actually stays the same. The y value changes its sign, all right? If you do a y-axis, the x value changes its sign, but the y stays the same, all right? For these, it's a little more complicated because when you start moving by numbers, there's, there's not an easy rule, so I'm not gonna write anything in there. If you do it in the equation y equals x, what happens is the original x value actually becomes the new y value, all right? Now, remember, this is a point. Usually, it goes x comma y. So this number, maybe it's four comma two, will actually become the point two comma four. All right, now remember, you don't have to memorize all this. I just want you to understand that it could be written that way. All right, lastly, a rotation. We're gonna focus on doing them around the origin, zero, zero, and we can do one of two things. We can do 90 degrees or we can do 180 degrees. If we say 90, we'll also give you a direction. Clockwise, that's this way, which is the way a clock moves or counterclockwise, which would be backwards from the way a clock moves. If we tell you 180 degrees, the direction doesn't matter. If I spin 180 this way or 180 this way, I end up at the same exact place. So we don't have to give you a direction if we ask you to rotate something 180 degrees. 
Now, once again, there are notations that look like this. You don't need to memorize them. 90 degree, 90 degree clockwise would switch the X and Y values and take this and make it negative. Okay, you don't have to memorize that though. Counterclockwise would also switch them, but it would make this one negative, right? And if it's already negative, keep in mind that would make it positive, okay? Because a negative with another negative would become a positive. If you do 180, they don't switch, but they both change signs, okay? Now, if you do see something like this, okay, just so you know, if you see something like x comma y and an arrow, and then you see something like 2x comma y, this is not a rigid transformation. This two is doubling your x distances. Now we didn't change the y at all, so the y's are staying the same. So all of this one does is stretch the whole thing right and left. Okay? If I put a two y here, it would stretch it right and left and stretch it up and down. That makes it a different size. Once it becomes a different size, then we aren't congruent anymore. So any number here other than one as multiplication is not going to be considered a rigid transformation. You can still do it, but it's going to change the size of it so it's not going to be congruent. All right. First video for this one, I'm going to keep really short. So that's really all this is. I'm going to actually do two videos here, okay? So make sure you watch both. All right, so lesson 4.9, just kind of talking about what it looks like. And then the second video is going to be a little bit longer, and we're going to do some examples of it on graphing paper. So I would highly recommend you have graphing paper in order to do that next video for lesson 4.9. All right.